Hello, welcome to Wyvern Minis. My name's Dan, and this is part two of my little video series chronicling my journey back to the classic gothic horror setting of the old world. Made famous by Games Workshop with its Warhammer Fantasy battles for years uh, before they inexplicably blew it up uh, for some strange reason. Uh, but they've put it back together again, just like Humpty Dumpty, and now we can play games back in that setting. I mean, you always could, but now you can do it officially with some new models and with some returning old models which I talked about in the previous video. Uh, so this one I'm going to talk about the games I've played so far, I've played a few, um, actually really enjoying it. I think there are there are some issues with the game which we'll talk about later, um, but I personally haven't experienced many of those. Um, I found it playing quite well. Um, I think there's there's more kind of like in a tournament, there's some ways that you can exploit the rules, um, but I haven't had that down at the club. Um, and also talking about how to get the old models on the table, uh, my orcs and goblins um, have been my focus at the moment, and I've got some plans going forwards, which I will um, go over as well. So uh, yeah, stick around and we'll have a chat about it. Cheers. Okay, so last time I was talking about my collection of wyverns, some of them old, some of them newer, and that I've got the made-to-order Shaman on Wyvern to assemble and paint, so I'm looking forward to adding him to my menagerie of winged lizards, so that would be cool. Uh, and I was also talking about some of the infantry that I've got, the orcs and goblins that I've painted up over the years to varying degrees of success. Uh, some of the orcs are posed here for a D&D session where I had them attacking the heroes um, in a session I was running, um, which looked pretty cool, but... I've painted up some new orcs and goblins for Hero Quest. I think you'll agree my painting has improved over time, which is what you want really. I'll pop a link below if you want to see some of this Hero Quest videos of how I painted those orcs and goblins, and that's going to be more along the lines of what I paint some newer orcs uh, as we go forward in the old world. But looking at the rest of the range, uh, the rest of the collection of models I've got, uh, these are Age of Sigmar Gloom Spike Gits. Um, repurposed night goblins from the old world with some new models some really lovely new models i really like this this forge world colossal squig he was around for a long time but i i bought that to be able to construct a force of gloom spike gits for use in uh, age of sigma i haven't used this army as much as i wanted to obviously haven't finished painting it just got it all undercoated ready for uh, speed painting but i love the uh, the manga squig models and um, that colossal squig and all the squig hoppers i mean really good um, characterful updates to the old models and while of course I can carry on using them in Age of Sigmar I like the option of being able to construct an old world force from these models as well but how would you go about doing that you can see they're on round bases um, not square ones the squig hoppers are on 32 mil bases not 25 by 25 squares and when it comes to the, the stone trolls I really like the new stone troll models but they're on 50 millimeter round bases um, and I ordered some of the old school metal stone trolls with the character of these guys is just amazing. You know, I, I like them both next to each other, but you can see the scale creep in action. Uh, classic Warhammer scale creep that happens all the time from Primaris Space Marines to Eldar Aspect Warriors. But the old stone trolls are on 40 by 40 millimeter square bases, and these new plastic ones are on 50 millimeter rounds. Now, I have used the, the new ones. Um, in a game of old world and you know you put three of them next to each other you've got an extra 30 millimeter width you know it doesn't make a huge difference to the game um, but there is a slight difference and when you get to other regiments other uh, units some of them on the old you know old style warhammer fantasy they had 20 millimeter square bases and now they're on 25s which makes them look really cool but means that if you rank up your, your army, it doesn't rank up the same as it would do using the new base sizes. So what do you do? Do you rebase everything or do you do something else? I decided to do something else using movement trays because I never rebased my orcs and goblins for Age of Sigmar. I got some of the newer goblins like I just showed and have put them on the appropriate Age of Sigmar bases. But for the orcs and goblins, I never rebased them to rounds. I didn't want to go to that effort and uh, muck them up. Um, and I was so smug when they came back to square bases in Old World. So, so smug until I found out that the square bases were not the right size square bases. And then I was less smug. But this is a, a good way to get around that. 
so this movement tray here from Cromlech is converting 20 millimeter bases to 25s. So you've got a regiment of 20 goblins, five by four, and they are they should be now on 25 millimeter bases exactly as these orcs are. So if you stand the orcs on the movement tray, you can see that the five lots of 25 millimeter bases next to each other is exactly the same width as the movement tray itself. So therefore the footprint of your goblin unit will be the same using this movement tray as if you had rebased them onto 25 millimeter bases, which is cool. The movement tray on the left is an older one that I got a long time ago, which just lets you rank up kind of very dynamic models easily, but doesn't give you the correct footprint for the new base sizes. Uh, and by the same token, the orcs have changed from 25 millimeter to 30 millimeter bases. And so I've got, again, some older movement trays here, which let you rank up the orcs where they've got their weapons poking out to the sides. Very difficult to rank them up on 25 mil bases. Um, and the older movement trays there, you can see that the, the ranks kind of stick out a lot more than the one on the left, which is as if they're on 30 millimeter bases. Uh, so this this one from Cromlech, which I got recently, is much better. And you can see here the width of the unit actually is about the same, but you get six models instead of five compared to these older movement trays. So it's quite important, I think, to try and get the right size uh, of the overall unit footprint. It's not just changing the size of square bases, it's also uh, being able to take round bases and put them into nice rectangular units. So these squigs uh, from a squig herd, these are Age of Sigma models. I put them on the correct 25mm round bases for Age of Sigma. And now, goblins and squigs are supposed to be on 25mm square bases. But by using one of these converter trays, I can just stick the, the, uh, the goblins and the squigs in there and get the correct size. And indeed, with my older squigs, which are on square bases, but the slightly smaller square bases, I can do the same sort of thing and just make them the right size on their square base converters. You'll see here, I've um, actually magnetized the bottom of these bases and put magnetic sheets on the movement trays. So even these metal squigs don't go anywhere when you start moving them around, which is really handy. And this works even better for lighter plastic models like this Goblin Spearman. It was really difficult to get them to rank up on the 20 more bases. Um, so having the extra space on these movement trays is great, but also the magnets really handy um, you can see I've tried to weigh down the back of the base on this standard bearer because in the old plastic regiments you've got metal pieces for these kind of front rank guys always used to tip over but that's not a problem with the magnetic movement tray he just uh, sticks in there absolutely fine can move them around and uh, releases fanatics so assembling these movement trays nice and easy I ordered these ones from Cromlech uh, because I was confident they were going to be exactly the right size as they are um, but you can order them from lots of other places. Anywhere that does laser cutting of MDF or HDF pieces uh, will offer them. Um, there's also 3D printed options uh, available. What I like about the MDF or HDF versions is that they come in two pieces. You've got the base and then you've got the slots on top. And that lets you put a magnetic sheet in very easily. Now, of course, you can get other ones which have slots for magnets to go in. But magnetic sheets are cheap and very easy to to sort of put on and use um, and a magnetic sheet is incredibly useful for keeping everything in place as you're playing the game all you need to do is just position the bases uh, use up the magnetic sheet in the most kind of efficient way possible um, cut it i tend to cut it with a with a knife but you can cut it with scissors if you prefer just make sure you're careful or if you're using a knife use a, a nice steel rule to be able to cut it nice and straight um, and then you can just stick it on the, the magnetic sheets tend to be self-adhesive. Um, so just peel it off, stick that down on the base, and then use a bit of super glue to glue the slots on top of that. And, uh, and there you go, done. You can spray paint them if you wish. You can add flock and you know, grass or um, you know, stones or whatever if you want to, but I think probably just spray painting them is, is enough, and that's probably what I'm gonna do. Um, if you do end up cutting the sheet a little bit irregularly, you can just cut the offcuts and you know, it doesn't have to be a single sheet across the whole thing. You can you can put several sheets next to each other to use up your little offcuts uh, so you have minimal wastage. Um, but yeah, it's very simple, quick and easy um, and will let you get your army of old models back on the table in no time at all. 
I'm just going to finish the video off with a few comments about the games that I've played recently uh, of Old World. Just my thoughts about how the games went, what I learned, rather than a blow-by-blow -blow account of each game. So this one was against High Elves. Um, I took a Wyvern, I wanted to take some trolls and some ogres just for fun, some fanatics and squig hoppers for a bit of enjoyment, and a solid core of orc boys. Now this was a pretty tough game. Um, I found the giant wasn't quite as good as I thought it was going to be. It was killed relatively easily. Um, dragons are tough. I also found that out in a previous game against Tomb Kings that I didn't get any um, pictures of. But the, uh, the, uh, the Tomb Kings Necrolith Bone Dragon is horrible, really, really hard. Um, the Wyvern is not as good as I was hoping it was going to be. Um, it's nowhere near as good as a dragon. Um, I mean, the stats aren't dramatically different. It's quite a lot cheaper. But um, yeah, the, the High Elf Dragon was definitely outclassing my boss and Wyvern. Um, fanatics, as much fun as they always were. That's a recurring theme. Um, I know that they have been used in tournaments and may be considered a bit beardy, but I think having fanatics whizzing around the table is just a lot of fun. Um, they did a lot of damage to my troops as well as the enemies, um, but they, they certainly make the enemy think twice uh, about coming anywhere near. So uh, yeah, it ended up, I tried to charge the wyvern into the dragon, it didn't go particularly well for my boss and then the dragon managed to wipe out the giant as well so it was a win for those pointy-eared elves which was a, a bit of a shame but there you go um, now this is a, a really old boss that I painted up to be my version of um, Grimgore uh, back in the old days and I played a game against Chaos and this was a real slugfest it was heavyweight punching I went for big blocks of orcs two big blocks of black orcs as well um, just to see how they would work you know so I think it's just some orcs some black orcs and some trolls and that's about it for the list um, and uh, it was against a very infantry heavy um, chaos warriors force they had a dragon as well which again was scary and nasty um, I didn't have any tricks going on no fanatics or anything like that it was just, uh, let's move up to the middle of the table and try to punch each other, which um, I did regard it more of an experiment to see how the big blocks of troops would work. And I wanted to use my old Black Orcs as well as my new ones. Um, yeah, it was pretty brutal. Um, the Chaos Warriors were very strong um, and I lost that one in the end. Uh, but it was, it was quite fun, but it was certainly, I think, experimental and I would use Black Orcs again but not exclusively. And uh, my most recent game, I think this was my most fun of all the games I've had so far. Um, I had quite a balanced force, I decided to even go for some artillery at the back, um, which kind of ended up meaning that our forces were quite well mirrored to one another because obviously as a dwarf player he had some artillery at the back as well. He was using the Slayer force um, so he had a, a king there. Oh no, I don't think he was using the Slayer Force, but he did have some Slayers, and I gave him a bit of a kicking. Uh, found the Slayers actually die quite quite easily without any armor, um, but that's what they're trying to do anyway. Um, again, fanatics whizzing around, spells, um, foot of Gork stomping all over the place. The Wyvern did really good work here. Charging the Wyvern into some infantry worked really well. Um, the, the block of orcs I've got there, they were good. Um, they managed to do uh, a very good job standing up to the slayers, actually. And that was a case of a, a large uh, unit of infantry succeeding against a higher quality unit of inf infantry, but of smaller numbers. Um, so yeah, that was, that was interesting. Again, the giant died much more easily than I was expecting. Um, he, he did quite well. He had a really fun turn of picking things up and eating them, but you know, it, didn't last, didn't last as much as I thought it was going to. Um, in the end, I managed to wipe out his whole army, I think, apart from his uh, his king on his shield bearers. And the king on the shield bearers, I mean, it's almost as strong as a wyvern. But this fanatic, he was definitely man of the match. He whizzed about going through both battle lines, killing off my guys as well as his guys. Um, it was a lot of fun, uh, really enjoyed the game. I managed to win it in the end, um, but it was, uh, yeah, just, an enjoyable game. 
So just to summarise my final thoughts about my games of Old World so far, not from a tournament perspective, just mine. Uh, Dragons, really, really strong, as perhaps they should be. Uh, Giant, I found he died more easily than I expected because he hasn't got a good save or many wounds. Uh, movement is important, so there is a, a bit of tactical element to the game, which is what you want really. And blocks of infantry are effective and do work, which is which is really cool. Uh, fanatics, brilliant fun, like they always were. Enjoy them a lot. Um, but I do wish that infantry could step up and fight. You know, that's a bit annoying when you lose a front rank and then you can't fight back. Um, but overall, I think it's been really good. Uh, working really nicely at my, my local club. I can see there have been some issues on some tournaments. You know, you could kind of uh, min-max things a bit too much. Maybe cavalry is a bit too strong. But overall, down at my club, it's been working really well. And that's Black Hole War Gamers. It's been, a, yeah, a load of fun. So, hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, thanks for sticking around, if indeed you have. Um, thanks for putting up my croaky voice. Uh, got more colds from the lurgy mops coming back from school and nursery recently um so that's that's it really i'm really enjoying old world and i'm certainly going to carry on playing more games of it using my orcs and goblins in terms of future plans um i want to do some terrain building um and that's going to be probably next old world video is going to be building some terrain um i want to work on the orcs and goblins getting them painted up because i'd like to have a, a full force painted up so I'm going to go over kind of what I have for that um, because I kind of like taking the approach of having one big army made up of smaller components. Um, so quite a sort of narrative way, thinking about how an orc and goblin war might develop over time. So you've got one powerful war boss and uh, he's got various night goblin tribes, um, clans of uh, forest goblins and things like that all collected together. Um, that's how I tend to construct my armies. So um, I'll be looking at that, but also I've got a load of old undead, which I'd like to do something with, uh, Vampire Count's army. They're not official uh, as it is, um, they're legends, but that doesn't matter because I'm just playing with my mates, so that's fine. Uh, but also I'm very excited by the prospect of constructing a dwarf army, which might seem a bit strange, um, but I've always had a, a lot of sympathy for the dwarfs, um, even when I've been killing them with mohawks and goblins. Uh, always enjoyed them. And uh, the new arcane journal lets you have a, an army of slayers. And I mentioned before that I very much enjoy the Gotrek and Felix series of books. So having an army of slayers feels pretty good. Um, I'll, uh, I'll be talking about that in a future video and trying to get a uh, real nice army i think it'll be quite a nice contrast to have on the one hand orcs and goblins construct com composed of old models i've had for a long time updating that and constructing armies from an existing collection uh, with some modifications to it versus what do you do from scratch do you take a the concept of an army and trying to make a a kind of focused army list i tend to in the past just collect whatever i want and make an army from that but with the dwarfs i'll be looking more at um, making the army list first and then painting the, the army to suit that which is a different approach to what I normally do but I think it should be a lot of fun um, and certainly after that last game playing against Pat's Dwarfs um, you know it was it was quite eye-opening eye seeing how they work um, and made me uh, made me feel quite excited to have my own Dwarf army on the table so uh, yeah come back for that like and subscribe and all that kind of good stuff and hopefully i'll see you for the next one uh in uh the scary gothic old world cheers uh.